So a lot of people wonder why on earth I go through any of the trouble of doing this. And, you know, when I was a not so scary guard at the Met Museum, I stood around a lot of pre-Renaissance Sienese and Florentine altarpieces that were prepped with their contemporary version of exactly what I just made. And it was kind of incredible because these things are 800 years old and they have a fraction of the cracking that an oil painting that's 50 years old has. That goes back to, of course, if you make your own oil paints, it's not going to crack as much because everything that's organic is infinitely more archival. But this is just super resilient. Um, it is finicky. It is susceptible to changes in environment, like uh, condensation or humidity, which is tricky to control in an old New York apartment. But it's still around. The paintings are still fairly intact and a Sienese altarpiece from 1350 is going to be in much better shape than an ounce sound keeper, kefir hanging up at the Met right now. So it goes back to the quality of your materials. Do you want your work to last? Do you want it to be utterly disposable? It's the same for paper. I don't put this on a lot of paper because you should have a rigid support for a ground like this. But when I use paper, I try to use high quality, 100% cotton rag, watercolor paper, obviously, because it can absorb the ground better, but also because most commercial papers now also, in terms of conservation, are in much rougher shape than paper pieces of paper that are 500 years older. And that just goes back to the sort of wood particles that they used hundreds of years ago. They were unintentionally organic. They weren't riddled with all of the pollution and chemicals and things that you're finding in the air now. And they were made to last because the process and the fabrication was a lot more time consuming and a lot more expensive. So it makes a big difference when you use products that you make yourself that are not disposable, that are often bought from companies like Kramer, which supply art conservation departments, and then some cheap throwaway material you can get on Amazon. And maybe that's a metaphor for life, I don't know. But I find that it makes a big difference also in how you treat your drawing when you go to draw on it. You're not going to be as flippant, you're going to make better decisions because you've already put a ton of effort just into preparing the surface. And with art, most surfaces are doctored by their respective artists anyway. So I think this is cleaner and even less labor intensive than a lot of other surface prep methods. Um, but it requires a bit of art nerd, Sherlockian Holmes research and a lot of time spent looking into the suppliers who sell the materials necessary for this, which surprisingly tend to be cheaper because they are organic and sourced from things that are now common and easier to get than something that's chemical and made in a lab somewhere. So I know my drawings will last for a really long time. I'm not worried about it. And uh, it's a nice thing to be able to say about my work. So that's the archival history of uh, a medium such as this.